Right, it's about welcome out to shop. Someone asked a cool question. He said he doesn't understand how a two-stroke does not set fire to itself. <laughs> so let's just say we've got a two-stroke like this, and it has a transfer port in it, and a bit above that it has the uh, exhaust port and so on. And he says, just when you've got a piston like this, as I crank down here, and we're a bit down now, aren't we? So we're like that. When this goes kablamo, and there's a weight of flame front, he said, how come that little ring gap that's in here, little gap between your rings, how come that flame front doesn't propagate down that ring gap, squidge down here, and then just combust all this? He says, I don't understand how that doesn't happen. It's a very good question. Number one is, is that um, you can uh, extinguish a flame by actually just popping it through a restriction. The um, problem with uh, a flame front is that the way it works is that, just say we've got bands of fuel, yeah, like this, right, and we've got a spark plug electrode like this. Spark plug um, basically does some electron stripping and all the rest of it, there's a cascade avalanche uh, breakdown voltage. You get a spark, this creates a kernel, it's a region of plasma, and um, that is very, very hot. And what it does is it heats up, because this is an exothermic reaction, combustion is an exothermic reaction, so heat radiates outwards, like this, in the form of photons, like so, you get a bit of light, a bit of... Uh, bit of noise, <laughs> although noise is not a force, but anyway, uh, it heats up this then other region around here, and then this combusts, and then this shits out heat, like this, and this is what we call a flame front, and this is what we call a frame, flunt, a frame front propagation, it's how it progresses basically. And with engines, there is the, with combustion, there is laminar, uh, there's laminar flame fronts, and then there's turbulent flame fronts. That's a totally different series. We'll get to that. <laughs> but basically, as you can see, it's kind of like this cascade. It's like dominoes. Then that heats up this bit, and that heats up this bit, that heats up this bit, that heats up this bit. Now, when you get to your spark plug, uh, your piston ring gap. So let's just say this is our piston ring. This is where we get to a problem. Oh no, this is a bloody good thing. <laughs> because this bit combusts and it sends heat this way. This bit combusts, 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 combusts. This is all the heat being transferred. Now, the piston rings absorb a lot of that heat. And this heat makes it over here and then it breaks out into this. And just imagine these are other bands on the other side of the piston. But the thing is, there's not much heat going on because the heat that's absorbed by the piston rings is a lot lower it's a lot lower of the transfer instead of these big fat fuckers if we just do fat arrows you know big fat arrows this is the, the in a sense the thickness of the arrows is the um, the amount of heat the amount of energy so this little pistly thing comes through and it just isn't enough to raise this um, fuel air mixture that's now been drawn in under the under the piston all that's already there it's already been drawn in for the next combustion process so in a sense this tiny ring gap is a choke point it chokes the flame out the flame front basically stops and even if it does combust it might combust a tiny bit uh, we're talking a couple of thousand a hundred thousand maybe even a million atoms or molecules together but then that's it it peters out and this is in a sense how um pre-ignition and detonation can occur if you have hot spots on your piston the fuel and air that's around that hot spot it absorbs that heat because the piston is then transferring that energy to that region around it and it combusts there so hot spots are bad because they can create their own combustion ignition source minus the fucking spark plug they'll do it before and like fuck you don't care this is why we need compression because we need to compress it to add energy into it heat into it to bring it very close to where that fuel will auto ignite and then the spark plug just fucking just tips it over the edge like i say it's that cliff that combustion cliff and then as soon as you do that all oh, fucking hell breaks loose 
So this is why is that that piston ring can quite easily choke out. Uh, the piston itself absorbs a lot of heat, it's aluminium. So it basically just takes that away. And on the other side of this, you've got to remember this is cold. This has been compressed, it is in the hot end. And talking about, ch oh for fuck's sake, why did I use red? Oh, do the transform a bit. <laughs> Bloody red is a nightmare. <laughs> this is also important, what I was getting at, this is also important with um, your spark plug in, in a sense. So your spark plug will be sat here like this with its threaded section, like that with your electrode sticking out and all that. And you'll notice, especially with two strokes, is that there's this kind of, this is your, your compression, uh, your combustion chamber. But you'll see you'll have this and then you'll have your squish bands like this. You need to be able to allow this flame to expand and propagate through. This is that thing, and we will get to it, that's why I've got the 3D printed wankle parts out. Now that knobhead who talks about um, the problem with wankles is that the apex seal sweeps past and combustion, it's just nonsense. The other thing is as well, is what he does is, is he basically just welds all this up, the crudest welding you've ever seen. When an apex lines up with a plug hole, it actually leaks internally. The volume is offset. It's kind of like a wrist pin in a piston. The wrist pin is offset in a, pin, uh, in a piston, slightly. Uh, and this really helps that motor. What the f was that? And does that just makes this thin, skinny passage, gets rid of all of this, like that, gets rid of all of that and just has a hey, fucking good luck. Good luck even getting the fucking thing started. That's why I haven't seen an example of it running yet. Because if you do that, you channel this in there like so, the chances, the problem is, is having your mixtures mixed. And you've got to make sure that in this channel here that this idiot has welded in, you've got to make sure that this is 14.7 to 1 or very close. It cannot be 9 to 1. If it's 9 to 1, it'll choke it out. If it's 22 to 1, it'll also choke it out. And you can't really create that much turbulence in here because it's just going to swim around like this and then the rest of it's just going to flow past it like that. Like a pit tube and stuff like that to a degree but this isn't open on the other end so you're just gonna have stagnation there and the thing is not gonna want to combust it's not gonna work this is why Mazda have designed this uh, the, Mazda have developed this engine and they sell fucking millions of them and this dickhead sells nothing because he's a dickhead <laughs> hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit dripping every time every time